Difficulty levels have finally come back to Destiny in some capacity. I don't know why they were gone for as long as they were, but alas, they have returned. I was talking with my friend Jez on this topic recently, some positive, some negative, about master level content and some of the issues that he had and how I'd go about fixing some of those problems. Today, I want to talk about the two master level activities, Nightfall and Nightmare Hunts, along with the raid and their rewards and reward structure, with a side of Armor 2.0 chat at the end and how it all relates. The Master Nightfall has been getting a good amount of praise lately for multiple reasons. Number one is that it's rewarding and infinitely grindable. We've had a lot of those activities in the game in the past, sure, but this is the first time we've had a true end game rewarding activity be repeatable. Being able to farm for stat rolls on exotics and high level materials is really, really great. Number two is that it's challenging. The biggest piece of positive feedback I've gotten from people who are doing Master Nightfalls is that it feels good to actually have to coordinate with your team in non-raid activities. It feels good to actually have to try with regards to combat again. It's tough enough that you'll be punished for mistakes, but it's not so tough that it's completely asinine to try beyond one time during the week. I know this because completing a Master Nightfall actually awards Triumph Score, whereas something like Solo Shattered Throne does not. We haven't had real combat challenges in the game in this way for quite a long time. The only thing we had was Day 1 raids, or if you wanted to handicap yourself in 100k Nightfalls last year, but you never really needed to go that far with the handicap. If the entire game was like this, then I think that would be really exhausting. The Master Nightfall is a very very welcome addition to the game, as I've said. But then we come to the Master Nightmare Hunts. The Master Nightmare Hunts are required for the Shadowkeep title, Harbinger, and they also reward a pinnacle level item, which is valuable for those trying to level past 950. However, once you've gotten your pinnacle item for the week on each character, the purpose of Nightmare Hunts becomes much less clear, especially after chasing the related triumphs. They do reward a Phantasmal Core on completion, which is useful for farming items from the Lectern. While weapons don't rely on stat rolls, armor does. And armor from the Lectern doesn't really appear to roll very well, because you can buy these essences and the game doesn't detect where the source of the core is from. Which makes this armor not really that appealing to go hunt down for the endgame grind. The Master Nightmare Hunts should be a slightly lesser version of the Master Nightfall. I say lesser because it doesn't take as long to complete one compared to a Nightfall. The Nightmare Hunts need to have that repeatability factor on Master levels. To make the Nightmare Hunts more appealing per level, I would love to see an optional objective box on each armor essence. This optional objective would be complete a Nightmare Hunt to upgrade this armor, or maybe reach platinum ranking in a nightmare hunt, and the upgrade would be increased stats on the armor piece based on the difficulty of the nightmare hunt you completed. So, you do a chest piece essence, you go imbue it with the soul of a master level nightmare or whatever, and then when you turn it into the lectern, it'll generate an armor piece that is on par with what you might see from a master nightfall or whatever equivalent difficulty that you completed the nightmare hunt on. Ideally, this loop would take as long as it takes the average master nightfall. So if you go into a nightmare hunt with an essence, instead of giving you a core to spend on a new essence, it would imbue the essence that you have. If you have no essences, then it would give you a core. This is a much more conservative method than giving you both a core and an imbued essence. It would take you two runs instead of one to get an armor piece, but I think Master Nightmare Hunts take about half as long as the Master Nightfall, so it seems like it would even out. Then again, you're not guaranteed an armor piece from the Nightfall anyway. The point is, I'd want to keep the two pretty similar in terms of time investment to reward. Next, I want to talk about the raid. I said it in my first impressions video for Shadowkeep, and I know it's not a take that people are very excited to hear, but as soon as contest mode is turned off, the raid becomes a joke. In fact, basically all raids have had this happen to them in Destiny 2. Even with all the brutal nerfs that we've gotten as players, the raids are still incredibly easy. From a combat 
perspective. Obviously, raid mechanics have no level associated with them and thus are more difficult for those not familiar or as skilled, which could also impact your ability to deal with the combat scenario. That's not what I'm referring to for the purposes of this next part. I'm talking purely gun shooting at an enemy difficulty. I hope that in the future, the raid, which is supposed to be the pinnacle level PvE activity in the game, will get similar treatment to the Nightfall, or even just getting multiple difficulty settings. The new difficulty settings could just be Bungie's way of testing things out for now, and maybe it'll come later. We used to have multiple difficulty settings at Destiny 2 launch. Unfortunately, they weren't really incentivized that well, nor did they live up to the hard mode versions of D1 raids, where certain mechanics were changed or added to boss fights. They were purely combat only. Nowadays, I think that combat only changes would be fine, as things have changed dramatically since the Leviathan days. The raid maybe doesn't need the same intensity as the Master Nightfall or Contest mode all the time, but the option for it should exist. With regards to loot quality from the raid, I don't think my stat rolls in the raid should be anything lower than mid to high 50s. I have a set of 951 gloves that dropped from the raid that rolled with 54 stats. Meanwhile, I can spend old Leviathan tokens from year one at Benedict and scoop up high rolled Leviathan armor for no work at all. In fact, some of my highest armor rolls are still from turning in Leviathan tokens during week one. Do I still have about 8,000 Leviathan tokens from playing the raid back in the day? Yes. Do I realize that I'm in the extreme minority in this? Yes, but still. I'm sure this has been mentioned already by plenty of other people, but my friends and I constantly talk about the fact that contest mode should be brought into the game on a permanent basis as an optional difficulty modifier. Number one, I think just having the ability to play the raid as it was on day one as an optional thing would be cool to have for the game for those who want to see if they can take on the challenge. My friend Char suggested a differently colored 24 hour emblem for those teams who complete contest mode after the first 24 hours to prove that they could still beat the raid at those difficulties, which is an awesome idea, I think. But I'd also like to see a higher combat difficulty setting for the raid, again, for chances at even higher stat rolled items, and to really emphasize the raid's role in Destiny as the source for the highest level items in the game. One thing I've seen a lot with regards to raid loot is that raids should reward pinnacle items on the first run of a reset per character and then reward non-powerful items on repeated plays. Now, I'm pretty sure I didn't make this next thing up, but I believe Bungie has said that they want the raid gear to be prestigious. They want it to be rare because it's the raid. There should just be gear that is inherently rare in the game. I can totally see this point, it's pretty valid, they just want something that isn't really farmable to show off the dedicated versus non-dedicated, although getting lucky with loot drops is less dedication than it is RNG. There is another problem with repeatable raid loot runs, and that is farming a single encounter over and over again. Most people, I would imagine, would simply load up the first encounter, beat it, leave, reset, and then repeat over and over. In order to counter this, a system would need to be put in place where you'd need to complete a full raid in order to start a new run. You could probably do this with some sort of scorecard-like bounty that checks off boxes as you kill bosses, and then you turn in the card in order to get four random raid items with a normal mode version and then a contest or increased difficulty version for higher drops, etc, etc. However, would this be fair to people who are not capable of completing the raid and are simply looking to farm the first encounters for loot? No but I think it not being fair is completely valid. If you want to be able to farm the raid, you should have to prove first that you can reliably beat the raid instead of just farming the easiest encounters. In response to Bungie's hopefully not completely made up point of wanting raid loot to be rare that I'm pretty sure that I didn't make up, I think I didn't make it up, I have a counterpoint. I would argue that people who are capable of clearing the raid that often where they could do farm runs are probably already considered worthy of obtaining raid items in hopes of finding the stat rolls that they're looking for. I don't think many people would argue that someone who has cleared the raid 20 times is not worthy of getting to wear the raid loot, although I would argue that someone who can only clear the first encounter is not worthy just yet. 
Perhaps Bungie could set a minimum amount of clears before you're allowed to farm if they are that concerned. Another argument is the introduction of universal ornaments. Universal ornaments completely change the look of armor, and that includes raid armor. This reduces the raid armor's value to nothing more of a bunch of stat sticks. The raid armor isn't the only armor that can use the raid mods either, so we can't even have that excuse. I would love to see the raids return to their former D1 glory with Age of Triumph. Level 390 raids in Destiny 1 were tough, mainly because combat was different back then, and the rules were different too, but that intensity, that combat challenge, was still a thing, and I'd like to see that back. Again, as an option. I want to be rewarded for choosing to go the extra mile, whatever that might be. Finally, in relation to hunting for max stat rolls, I want to quickly discuss what seems to be the main gripe of Armor 2.0, which is elemental affinity. With Armor 2.0, you need the stats that you want and the affinity that you want. Stat rolls are so much more random than perk rolls were, and there have been tons of examples that I've seen and heard of where people spend tons and tons of currency to try to get the one stat roll that they're looking for, and it just doesn't happen, or if it does, it happens to be on the wrong element. Bungie put out a big post about Armor 2.0, it's in the description, and their design philosophy behind what they did and why, and it's a great read, and I think all the points are totally valid, although the intent of introducing even more RNG into armor hunting is to keep you playing, let's be honest. Bungie doesn't want players to only have to hunt one armor set, they want you playing. If there was one thing that I'd be willing to bend on right now, it would be the option to re-roll your elemental affinity for a high price. Let's say an Ascendant Shard, or a few Enhancement Prisms, or something like that, with an increasing cost every time you re-roll it. You'd want it to be restrictive enough that you can't just spam it, but it needs to be available enough that you would actually consider it as an option in the hunt for gear. I've seen the argument that exotics getting the wrong affinity for the weapon type that they cover is also not great, and while true, there are a very small amount of exotics that only affect a single weapon archetype. Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves, Oathkeeper, Peacekeepers, Actium War Rig, all of which are pretty underwhelming exotics in their own right, but that does not invalidate the point that getting a Void Actium War Rig would be awful since auto rifles have solar affinity. To recap, Master Nightfall is great. Master Nightmare Hunts should become more like Master Nightfalls. Introduce higher stat rolls on raid loot and give raids the Nightfall treatment with regards to difficulty options. And re-rolling Elemental Affinity on armor for a high price might be acceptable. I think the time to be stingy with loot drops, at least armor drops, is over. With stat roll RNG being as crazy as it is, you need to let the loot flow. Only very few amounts of armor pieces will make it into that top tier, and considering how many build possibilities are out there and ways to optimize are out there, I think more access to higher quality drops at the moment would not be a terrible thing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.